Now that we have defined AM modulation, double sideband loss carrier, it's time to see how to generate and demodulate the, these signals. So modulation and demodulation of AM signals. Specifically, we'd like to go over the generation circuits, which are similar to double sideband subrest carrier. Then we will go into the simpler generation of AM. And then we'll go into the demodulation process, which include rectifier detector or envelope detector. Now, the generation of AM signals, AM signals can be generated in exactly the same way double sideband subrest carrier modulators work. But we're going to replace the message by A plus M of T. So if you go back to our previous videos where we explained the modulator circuits, we can use the same circuits and those circuits are reproduced below. Okay, the input to those circuits were the message. Instead of using the message, whether we have the bridge detector or or we have, or we have different kind of circuits, we have the modulating using the nonlinear devices, or we have the bridge and diodes, we can replace the message with A plus M of T. Instead of the message, we'll be feeding the circuits with A plus M of T, and everything remains the same. In fact, the presence of this carrier can allow us to make a simpler circuit, where we can use this carrier to switch the circuit. Instead of building our own switching mechanism, we can use this existing carrier to to build a simpler circuit, and this switching circuit will have only one single diode. We're going to see this circuit in the next slide, but for now, the summary of this slide is that we can use the same circuits explained uh, before to generate double sideband plus carrier. The only thing we need to do is to replace the message with the message plus a DC value. Now, this circuit looks much simpler this can be used for AM generation, which means generation with double sideband plus carrier. Now we're going to use one diode. We have the load resistance here. Then we have a band bus filter. At the end of the modulators, usually we have a band bus filter because the signal will be modulated. Now we are going to assume that the amplitude, the added A, is much greater than M of T for this to work. Of course, this means lower efficiency. But we have the message here and we have the carrier. Okay, so A cosine omega C. This carrier is going to work as a switch controller for this diode. So whenever the, the carrier is positive, and since the magnitude of the carrier is much greater than M of T, the impact of M of T will be minimal. So the diode will be controlled by uh, the carrier. So the signal, the blue signal here, V sub R, would be as if we have taken the input signal A cosine plus M of T, and we have multiplied it by a switch, a square wave, which is 0 or 1. The square wave, which is the equivalent of this uh, switching circuit, can be represented as a Fourier series. So this is like multiplying by a square wave, 0 or 1. Remember, this is a, a periodic signal, which can be represented by the following Fourier series. And we can perform the multiplication now. If you open the brackets, we get... Uh, specific terms. Remember, because we are doing modulation, we're just interested in this term. There will be other terms, but I just want the message multiplied by the cosine. So how do we pick the signal? Using the low uh, the band bus filter. The band bus filter centered at the carrier frequency will pick these two signals, the signal of interest. So we have modulated the signal, starting with the message, and we have added a carrier here. So in fact, to modulate, we are using we're not just adding A here, we're adding A cosine. We are at the transmitter side. So this will perform modulation without the need for four diodes or, or a complicated circuit. The other terms, as we mentioned, will be blocked by the band bus filter. Okay, so we see the advantage of using the carrier to simplify the generator side. Now to see the process in the frequency domain, the same simple circuit, we're starting with the message plus a carrier. So the first spectrum showing you the message and the two delta representing the carrier, we are this side. The impact of switching as if we were multiplying by series of cosines at multiples of the frequency frequency. So we'll get the original spectrum, okay, shifted to multiples of the original frequency. Of course, the amplitude of, of this uh, 
signal ex expected to decay as we go at higher frequencies. Now, if you are just interested in this part, you're going to use a band bus filter with bandwidth 2B and the center is a carrier frequency and we got our modulated signal. This is what we call double side band bus carrier. So mission accomplished and we have seen things in the frequency domain. Now, to go to the receiver side, of course we can receive double side band bus carrier coherently, which means we're going to build a receiver by multiplying the incoming signal by a cosine which is coherent which means there is no extra phase okay there is zero phase here compared with the incoming signal this is called coherent detection you can do this but this is rarely used why because we went from double side band sub carrier to double side band plus carrier or to full am for the advantage of easy reception so if you're going to use carrier you're not making advantage of easy reception we can do the easy reception or the non-coherent detection using two receivers. One is called rectifier detector and the other one is called envelope detector. In fact, there's lots of similarity between them. Now, the rectifier detector, okay, it's called rectifier detector because we are starting with a rectifier uh, and we're going to use the carrier term to, again, to work like a switch. And if you look at the circuit here, this is the incoming signal, the modulated signal. Remember now we are doing demodulation. So we have the rectifier here. The first element in our circuit is a rectifier. The rectifier is going to remove the negative part of the signal. And then we're going to use a low pass filter. We need a, a, a capacitance here to block the DC. And finally, this is our load. The message will appear at our load. So we'll see how the rectifier detector works. Okay. Now, this is a switching circuit, and here is the blocking capacitance circuit. Okay, this is called, you need, uh, it would be a good idea if you can re redraw this diagram to show that the components are very simple, rectifier, then we have a low pass filter, blocking circuit, and we have load. Now, let's see things in time and frequency domain. I think this is a very useful slide. It's going to show you everything. We start with the signal in time. This is the modulated signal plus carrier. In frequency, we have we are familiar with the spectrum. It has two deltas showing that there is a carrier component. At the output of the diode, the diode is going to remove the negative part. So the signal is shown here okay, with the negative part being removed. And now we're going to use a low pass filter. Remember, we have very fast variation in the carrier and we have slow variation in the envelope. So a low pass filter will remove the, the fast variation and keep the low variations. The spectrum of this part of the signal after switching is the same spectrum shifted to multiple frequencies as we have seen. At the output of the low pass filter, we're going to pick the signal that has a low frequency. In time domain, you can see that we're just picking the signal. Of course, there will be a scaling factor because if you go back to the full series, uh, it's, uh, the scale is not one. It is a scale of 1 over by. So if you want to get the message only, you need a blocking capacitance that's going to remove this delta. So we get our delta removed. In time domain, your signal will have an average of 0. So mission accomplished, we got the message back. Now we'll, we'll see how uh, the other detector works. This is the same diagram shown, but uh, we're showing you the frequency domain on one side and the time domain on the other side. In principle, we're doing the same thing here. You start with the double sideband, switching at the receiver side, we're going to get multiple images, low bus filter, give you the image with delta, uh, give you the signal with delta, you use a blocking capacitance, you remove um, the DC and you get your message back. The second non-coherent non detector is the envelope detector. Okay, there are some similarities between the two. We have diodes, we have uh, receiver, uh, but in principle here, our objective is just to follow the envelope. So we'll be blocking the negative part. The way we think is different. We'll be blocking the, the negative part, and then we have a capacitance that's going to charge and discharge according to the signal. And this is just a load. So when the diode D is forward biased, the signal is going to uh, charge on the capacitance. 
and when the signal is reverse bias, it's going to discharge in the resistance. Let's see this in more details. Now, here is again the, the envelope detector, diode, capacitance, and resistance. The operation of the circuit, okay, requires careful selection of, of the time constant, T, which equal to R times C, the tau, sorry, it's the time constant. Now, we want the time constant, we want the circuit to be very slow compared with the carrier and very fast compared with the signal. We want it to follow the signal and does not follow the carrier. So if, if it's too large, if we, pick it, if, the, if we pick the signal, the time constant to be too large, you're not going to follow the signal. It's going to be very slow. So if the signal goes down, you're not going to follow the envelope. The signal will take longer time to decay. And if it is very fast, you're going to follow the carrier rather than the signal itself. So we have two limits for selecting tau. From one side, we, went, we want the time of, of the circuit to be greater than the time of the carrier. The time of the carrier is now represented as inverse of frequency. Time and frequency are inversely related. From the other extreme, we want the time constant to be much less than the time of the signal. How do we represent the time of the signal? By 1 over the maximum of the bandwidth, because time and frequency are inversely related. It's very important to remember these two limits, because it shows that you understand. Okay? And now, of course, we can use, um, at the end, just like we did before, we can use a low bass filter to reduce the ripples. And we can also have a blocking capacitance to remove any DC. So this circuit looks simpler, but if you want to compare it with the other previous circuits, you have to be careful, because there we added, um, we showed the blocking capacitance, and we can also add the load here. So in principle, uh, you can bring this resistance here, as a load. So here, the signal after the rectifier, we have removed the negative part, and then after the capacitance, we have this signal with ripples, of course, because the capacitance signal is going, the capacitance is going to charge, discharge somehow. How do you remove the ripples? You can use a low bass filter symbol, and then we can use a blocking capacitance to get the signal back. So there are lots of similarities between envelope detector and uh, rectifier detector. In this slide, I'm asking you to go back to your book and figure exactly out uh, or go to uh, your references, find out, compare the TFR detector with envelope detector. Find the answer in the text or any source in the internet. You'll find out in principle that rectifier is made of half wave rectifier plus low bass filter. You can think of the rectifier as a synchronous effect as if you are multiplying by it, as if you are duplicating coherent, but you are not doing multiplication. Then we use a low bass filter to separate the message. Uh, in the envelope detector, the way we think is different. We just remove half wave uh, rectifier to remove the, the negative part. Then we have a low pass filter and nonlinear operation. And we want just to uh, have a, a time constant depending on the modulation index. Uh, uh, and then use a low bass filter and a blocking capacitance. To look at them, they are very similar, but the principle of operation is different. So if you have any comments, please leave them down uh, in the comment section. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.